<laughs> Hold on. So there's a culture here. There's a there's a scene where people make individual components for for external use on your laptop. Modulars, e- equalizers, and preamp stuff. It, it goes right. Okay, th- this is this is where it really ties into the beginning, right? Okay. That guy is he's like the sort of I don't know, like the one of the sort of the gods of really? this stuff. Yeah, it's really? like super pure. That's very expensive, but he's dead now, so it's like you can't get it. Really? Is that Inca's doctor? All right, look, look, it. I'm going to cut to the chair. How much would one of them cost now on the, on the market? Killer, killer, podcast. Killer, killer, official dot com. Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer, killer. We need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Here we go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast, live and direct, central London, or as central as you need to be. You don't want to be anywhere else, baby pie. It's a, it's a beautiful uh, time of the week to begin. Get yourselves ready for the upcoming Hoddle Wars. It's time to graph punks up and get up with some NFT gaming. We are in not my spot. We're in another spot right now. You know I love my studios. I'm that little bug that's in the corner all the time, but, uh, you know, with good reason. Uh, this is a friend of mine that goes back to my very beginnings, my humblest of beginnings with the Scratch Perverts. Um, my friend, is, he's morphed his way through a gang of tech from production to circuitry and communications on the keyboards, uh, synthesizers and the like, uh, creating brand new projects of an NFT variety under the guise of Daily. First of all, known as Plus One. The Daily, the Neil. How are we, me brother? Good, bro. How are you, man? <laughs> I'm good. How was that as an intro? That was, uh, I mean, Massive. <laughs> <laughs> thing is, though, you've got so much history, so much, um, so many hats. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. I mean, you've been at it for 25 years now, which I think is, it's quite a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I think in a nutshell, yeah. yeah. But yeah, there's been, there's been a few chapters now, which I'm, very blessed, very grateful for, very proud of as well, I think, to be fair. Um, but yeah, it's been a minute, man. And we do go back literally <laughs> to the very beginning, which is, says yeah. a lot about our age group. But, and the begin- <laughs> Yeah, really. I mean, it, there's an audience for Plus One and there's an audience for Daily. There's like these two worlds that are kind of coming together at the moment. Yeah, maybe, man. I, I hope so. Like, I feel like I constantly just try and join the dots between each chapter because every time I feel like I'm moving on or feel a need to move on to something else, the previous one comes running back and I realized that I just needed a break from one aspect and actually it's all mm-hmm. it's all integrated. It's all the same the same uh, need for inspiration, yeah. need for creativity and and then outlets for that. Mm. You know, so it always finds its way to something that's centered around the same themes, mm. even if it doesn't look it, you know. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Yeah, no, yeah. It all works itself out in the end. That's basically yeah, yeah, yeah. what you're saying. That's it. But but I I know you very, very well in a studio sense, in a hanging out sense, yeah. and all the good times we've had. And uh, one thing that is a constant is your creative, kind of creative curiosity. And that kind of falls in both uh, realms of tech and nerdetry, you know, and 100%. yeah, <laughs> and kind of rock star level serious play of, of just <laughs> getting some getting some gear and just like absolutely shagging the shit out of it. You know what I mean? You know, you go for I, it. Yeah, it's kind of it's sort of like tends to tend to not really have a middle ground for me. I tend to try and figure out some weirdness, and I get locked on that part. Yeah, yeah. it's just yeah. it's deep. <laughs> um, I, just, I remember the the days of DMC. Um, you know, the ITF era of yeah, DJ man. battling. Yeah. Um, we we can't move any further without discussing that. I mean, you are a, a pioneer, even to this day, a legend in the game. Scratch Perverts original, and um, I guess that was the precursor for a lot of what people would be hearing now yeah. in your music. You know, it is man, a hundred percent. I mean, we came from an era which is so, so profoundly different from now. Mm. You know, and there's no need to explain that. But twenty five years ago, like turntables were sort of limited to turntables if you wanted to do scratching there wasn't really even any secondary devices within your mixer or effects units not on the ones we used anyway so we were being creative with very small amounts of you know or or limit limited amounts of uh potential with the technology the the potential came from the music yeah yeah so that part instilled two things in me just experimenting to find ways of doing stuff with you know, limited tech, mm. which actually is a really good starting ground for anyone, I think. 
and then mainly really experimenting with music that existed and, and learning what was in that music, mm. which eventually made me want to try and make music really mm. i guess i was trying to do that with turntables and maybe was in a way and then wanted to do that with samplers and mm. and then find once i'd done it with samplers for i want to find other ways of doing it wanted yeah, yeah. to get better at playing music that became much more laterally the last five six years was really about really trying to understand music music theory a little bit better and seeing how that integrated yeah but it's all it's all a journey of that you know it all mm. comes from that place like from the scratch perverts you know experience which was so dear to me as well you know tony and joe mm. were nearly 10 years older than me like big brothers and you know had many aspects that i i just you know sponged off mm. in a way you know or i was a sponge for i mean uh, you know, being at their knowledge of records, mm. or in in Joel's case particularly, like the technology side, he was an absolute fiend for like synthesizers <laughs> yeah. and yeah. Now uh, you come yeah. to mention it, this studio does kind of mirror a, a, a level of uh, oh, sh- that the, 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 the Prime Cut has, has in merely his studio. apprentice, <laughs> <laughs> but it certainly rubbed off. You know, I think maybe in a different way. Like I'm not really a collector. I I I, I try to keep it more like absolutely functionality based that's what they all say you know, it's true <laughs> i just like the functionality to get better and better and sort of clear yeah, out the bits in the middle of that yeah, yeah. but yeah you know I, I don't know if this would all have come around without that yeah you know, I'm, I'm so lucky to have had them in, i still do have them in my life but on a work level at that mm. time and yeah it's it all like i said at the beginning it all feels very similar now to what i'm doing at this point of course. in terms of a men- mental side yeah, for sure. I feel that it's almost like what you know, because I can speak, in, you know, of the same era with the same lads. Um, they, they, Tony and Joel, or people like that that are in your life, First Ray and Mister Thing, mm. all coming in with different influences and records and turntablism as a whole was the was the teachings of the day. Yeah, right. Literally, man. And then, then, then when it comes back around that, you know, all these different external pieces of hardware that you're, you're creating this music from, it's, there is a level of, yeah, tutoring that you have to kind of find your way through as well. It's, it's like a, a whole, I, I don't know, I, I feel like it's a whole world that will be never end until, until the day I'm not here anymore. You know, everything goes in, in fits and stages. Like I went through a whole long phase around this sort of DMC time mm. where we were doing, we'd all got a bit better and we were doing madder stuff when mm. we guess we were winning titles level. Um, and then we were getting obsessed with like Aphex Twin and Square Pusher and things like that, which which makes complete sense really mm. when you when you look at it because musically they were, they were doing things that were pushing mad boundaries yeah. in, in their fields on a sort of genius geekery level um, and musical level. Um, but then also like through hip hop, I've got a, a, a absolute insane love for like the nuance of like sampling, which often is about literally can be loops, you mm. know, just how does that loop sound? Why does it sound like that? You know, mm. why does using our S612 down there, like I just yeah, yeah. bought at Christmas because I wanted <laughs> that tone make me happy yeah. and make me want to make a record with that? That's you know? so crazy, isn't it? How it's really works strange. Or, you know, why is limitation as important as... The, the modular there which gives you almost mm. endless limitation you know? mm. like it, it it's it's these sort of you know these kind of conundrums these these equals and opposites mm. that i think make music so fascinating mm. and that's what like so far anyway I, i've never reached a a junction where it makes me want to stop you know yeah. logic probably could have prevailed yeah 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 like get a real job yeah you yeah know? things like that <laughs> yeah definitely the last few years covid i think for everyone that's worked in music's probably thrown up a lot of questions yeah, you know yeah. but you know you keep on being that uh being opportunistic for what the opportunities are we want to call it a hustle you mm. know it's either way you know it's where the, we're the lifers group you yeah know? like we're, yeah, yeah yeah it's true it's true <laughs> people people model their uh their own careers on the likes of other people that have done it before and been successful in consistency in lifestyle yeah. within a music job. Yeah. That's a tough one, isn't it? It is. Because you've just got to go over that lip of, okay, I'm doing it. Yeah. You could, you're, we're, we're of the age now where you can't really look back and say, oh, I'll just go and bricklayer's job. Because yeah. we've, done the, we've done the apprenticeships, as we've talked about, yeah. 
in music. Yeah. So we know. We do. And a lot of the skills aren't as easily transferred as, you know, we'd be from other jobs. So you're sort of like, well, would I do otherwise, yeah. you know? And would I, it be? I, yeah. I, you know, I experimented a bit more in the last few years than I have done with other areas around music to do with, like, audiovisual stuff. But it's all, it's nucleus and its anchors are still yeah. music. And I think I, even that at points was... I went too far out of the comfort zone. Mm. Really, I, I do know that I just need to be here concentrating on music. And, and oddly, I, when I do that, more, I don't know, I'm starting to sound like a hippie now, but like the, the laws of attraction, the, yeah, the, 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 right. the, whatever's going on, the way the planets are aligning, seems yeah. to find opportunity to come back to the music for yeah. me. If I don't do that, it seems to, you know, yeah. and that's kind of natural progression. If you're not totally in that zone, and you're off experimenting with other things, people will be off finding people that are in the zone yeah i don't quite know how it all lines up but after 25 years there's something in there beyond you know my comprehension that seems to well let's stick with that for a second because that <laughs> that that's a that's an interesting case study as somebody that has gone through different journeys of their career and i'm sure there'll be people out there that are relating with this that you go off tangent a little bit you go you you try and carve a different area to which will eventually add value to you know a plus one or a daily later down the line yeah um but you can really feel the um uh the landscape as being one of small pickings because what you've always had as a as a journey yeah has been so fruitful but you have yeah. to go down that road. You have to do yeah. certain things. <clears throat> and when you come back into it, it's just almost like, ah, I'm almost re-plugged in. Yeah. And things are moving differently. Yeah. And, and uh, it's not that you forgot about it or took it for granted, but, you know, sometimes you've got to go down those roads to discover. It, it can be, it can be like, really, you know, it's quite a nurturing experience as an artist to do it for a while because you're, you get back to that place, which you hear a lot of artists talk about when they, like can a project or take time off they're like mm. i need to get back to what i was always about and when you do take that kind of curveball route for a while mm. to to perhaps do that first of all at least for me anyway first of all i find that in spades mm. you get back all of that very quickly because when there's no agenda when there's no managers agents mm. labels being like you need to be doing what you did on the last single mm. or you need to be doing better on the last thing you need to do this x mm. y and z mm whatever it may be, those, those pressures aren't there. You, you get back to the sort of nuts and bolts of what you're about. Yeah. And that can be anything depending on the, on the individual. And, and that's a really lovely experience. But also what comes after a sustained period of that is the world moves on. Mm. So you're not going to, unless you're very, very established and have a sign people are just desperate for more of, mm. which of course would apply to like a, a Daft Punk or something. Mm -hmm. But we're, there's not many of them. Mm. Most people are back to kind of square one, but mm. with the knowledge and the the new base they've built. Mm. And I think it just has to be a case of like remembering that, okay, you've actually probably got to a place where you're you've got the best foundation again. Mm. But now you got to get your you know you could get your fingers really dirty in the real yeah. world and kind of start again like you you did once before in that respect. But like as you say. You've built the foundation, so mm. and you've got the knowledge. Chances are it will be fine. Yeah, but you've got to be humble, man. Mm, yeah, you've got to be super humble. Almost like, like reset the whole yeah. mindset. Yeah, no expectations. People's yeah. people's attention spans a couple of weeks, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, it really yeah. is for yeah. practically everything. So, yeah. you know, I've learned that, and it, and it is a humbling experience. But, but then, like you say, opportunities start to come from mm -hmm. the f those bits of the labor you were doing. Yeah, in amongst that time, at the weirdest you know the weirdest times as yeah, well yeah, like. yeah. it's a funny one because <clears throat> i go through it as well your career you know if we do a deeper analysis you've had the hip-hop and the drum and bass the fabric era golden yeah. age of fabric yeah. uh with scratch perverts <laughs> and then that morphed into um you grabbing social media and creating new lanes for projects like Jack Beats, yeah, where all of a sudden this it, it became this two-headed monster of a of a dance outfit, yeah, um, of yeah. a new you know vlogging era of yeah. of, of of music that yeah. that 
set off so many people's careers and you guys big up benny you He's you there. guys were <laughs> either not um you guys were <clears throat> on top form again moving from scratch perverts to that yeah so you have a, a, a database of, of friends and contacts and and yeah. colleagues that, that really lean towards the newer projects you've got going on yeah i think so man i mean i think that the like you know we were saying talking about the sort of lineage of all this it it, it really in terms of actual output as a, a musician, as mm. a producer, composer, whatever it is, because, you know, I've, I've worked across, you know, doing those things. And I've even gone into, like, smaller aspects of, like, sort of soundtrack kind of stuff and advert music and things, you know, like, talk about the hustle. Mm -hmm. there's, there's other ways to, you know, build an income from this job. And it's important to sort of recognise that there's lots of opportunities to do that if, if you go looking for them, I think. Mm. But... You know, really where my heart lies and where the last few years have sort of reminded me of that is is dance music, you mm. know. I think in many ways that's truly to do with the fact it just makes me happy. Mm. I'm just happy doing it, you know. The, the last or the first album I did under my own steam under Daily was a really, really expen experimental sort of deep dive into into synthesis and, and melody and and you know what I, I ended up writing most of it in during covid and actually it was like total therapy for me but it's pretty dystopian sounding stuff and it's <laughs> sounds like covid era to me <laughs> yeah I'm like i'm proud of it but i don't know that a lot of people are going to necessarily listen to yeah. it you know and that's fine i you know i didn't make it for that really um it's always lovely when people do mm. listen to music but i make music really I think if I look at my whole career, I make music for people to enjoy as well as myself. Mm. You know, I, I get a bit bored if it's just me thinking, oh, that's all right. You know, it's yeah, nice to yeah. do stuff that is wider. And dance music has that sort of universal language. I kind of prefer doing it these days with without vocals particularly. Sometimes mm. bring them in. The, the, the next single does have a sort of vocal sample through it, and, and I certainly will use vocals, but I like that universal thing of just, just that... <laughs> Pulse. Uh, pulse. Yeah, that's a tribalism, I suppose, yeah. that's in there. Ooh, yeah, you know, okay. I think I enjoy that um a lot and and I think that's probably after a little bit of hitting forty and being like, Am I too old for this? I realised that like actually that's that's not an argument that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. You know, who are you? And you're only gonna be here once, you know. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be about age. And and dance music certainly shouldn't be. It's just I think we've lived through a period where, you know, people like a Sasha or a Digweed who mm. still would tour and might be 20 years older than us, mm. uh, they were very active when we were like at high school. And you yeah. just naturally think, oh, well, comes a point, we're conditioned to think, comes a point, you do dance with you for a couple of years and... You tap out. You tap we? out because yeah. people are like, oh, you, let's move on. Yeah, yeah. But like some of these guys, you know, don't for good reason. Yeah, and there's, right. there's no there's no reason not to see that as a blueprint. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's actually the right way around. It's just not affected by industry or, you know other aspects really i think it's funny it's interesting you said because i think with with hip-hop at its 50th uh year you know we come to expect break the dancers or um street artists to just be of an age where they could look or be or you know a place of from anywhere yeah because it's 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 taken on its age. Yeah, definitely. Hasn't it? I think it could be said the same for dance music, and particularly with producers, because back then, yeah. they used to be faceless as fuck. Like yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, straight up. Exactly, exactly, man. It's so true, you know? And it's like, you know, there's there's, uh, th there's just a grounds for it to be like, you know, it's, it's all music, you know? Mm. My, my dad is in his 70s and plays music like, or he would play music all day long mm -hmm. if, if he could. I'm sure he probably still does now he's retired. What music does he listen to? My dad listens to kind of all types of stuff, but, you know, one thing that... I guess I'm grateful for this, actually. Like, one thing about my dad was he plays... I don't really know how many things he plays now, but kind of plays... When I was younger, played by ear, played mostly, like, folk music. Nice. Um, and anything with strings, he pretty much could pick up and figure out how to play. <laughs> and, you know, whilst he was lecturing and doing his, his day job, you know. And, and he never really pushed on me a need to learn an instrument or anything. I guess maybe that came later, but the his sound in in the house was constant. You know, yeah. he'd come home from work and play his fiddle and Straight things. In, really, you know, yeah. and you when you're little, you don't really think about that, you know. But actually it was just I uh, just absorbing it mm. and the melody and stuff from all that kind of 
kind of Celtic kind of folk mm. music mainly that he would used to play. Damn, that's good. Yeah, no, let's take that it back to my roots. Yeah, yeah, get back to you your know, roots. But it's yeah. like it's there, you know, and it's so it's so funny. Like that was a big part of growing up before. Incredible. Like I really knew it was, you yeah. know. So you know, it might have been nice that he pushed. Oh, you should really get on a piano. I got you guitar lessons, but it wasn't the way my family was and. Mm. I think maybe if it was, I might have rebelled because that's maybe the way I would Wouldn't be. Wouldn't have been your thing Nah, but it, it did. It gave me a different lesson. So, mm. yeah, it's funny, man. But I just think the point is just like music, good music's timeless and there's no reason why a career can't be, as long as you can physically sustain, yeah, yeah. especially if you're touring. That's a, that's a whole other thing. But, you know, um, but yeah, man. I think like, I mean, just going back to your dad there and the things that you kind of picked up as a kid, when when you hit a certain age, you you do dig deeper and you yeah. you go through those motions. Do you think like there's been quite a self exploration, you know, a, a, a reassessment of yourself yeah. this year? Yeah, man, massively. Yeah. Like we did the we chatted about this a little bit. We met this morning, but yeah. when we did the podcast before. I'd reached a point in Jack Beats, which, on reflection, was you know, in terms of a moment in time to have had a project like that in terms of where music was, pre, it was still pre kind of streaming time, everyone else, like we really had a real golden, mm -hmm. golden, nearly 10 years with that project, which I'm so grateful for. Benny still does it, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but I reached a point where the music that was in and around the venues and stuff we were playing a lot, especially in the States, was, was changing over time. We were adapting to that and I felt it fitted in. And then really is is the sort of um the bigger sound of like the the night bass kind of movement mm. that kind of really kind of nicely bookended kind of housey sort of bass line music in the states run by one of the best guys in music yeah. ac bigger facey slayer, bigger yeah, facey cool. um you know ironically we were such good friends we all sort of came up together there's big stories about that but <laughs> like you know i i didn't feel like i fitted that sound you know i didn't i didn't make music that really worked with that and and, and it was with such a heavy heart really in hindsight that it was time to sort of stop mm. but also was knackered yeah i've been touring for 20 odd years like yeah. i was like do you need a bit of a break dude you, you went from one extreme to another yeah like uh, so much touring i've had skits on big up skits and he was tour, tour managing you guys at one stage <laughs> at Purse. i mean a lot of the stories that went on on oh that podcast we could, yeah we couldn't even broadcast <laughs> what or you lot went out too, oh but God. yeah. So that yeah. was just one one example of yeah. the, the 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 amount of workload that you were taking yeah. on the road. It, it is a lot, man, and it's like you know. By the end of Jet Beats, to be fair, I was the last few years of it, which I actually really enjoyed. I don't want to sound like negative about this, but I was more like, you know, it was it was still doing really well. We kind of built it to a point where we could kind of, to an extent, for a few years, we definitely could coast along to do what we liked with releases and things, mm. which is a real privilege. And then, really, things had sort of dried up over here by that point. By 2015, 16, we weren't really playing in this country that much. Or Europe, no. but Australia and America, those kind of quite interlinked, um, or at least they were back then, interlinked sort of uh, kind of... Scenes. Scenes, shall we say, yeah. Brutal travelling. Brutal travelling. I was kind of cool if I just get on a sort of long haul. No one could add, no one could get you on your phone. And no. I'd, I'd go to LA for like a night and then I'd come back again, you know. Really? Like I'd do it like a couple of times a month sometimes, you know. Really? And it's like... Because you're just like, I'm, I, I can't stay. Yeah, you know, you got all your, you know, your BA status, which we all used to chat about. <laughs> sort, sort of like, you know, I don't know, like little trophy of your gold BA card. That made it a lot easier because mm. you could maybe fly a bit better or maybe you fly in business or whatever. But, you know, those things are great and, and, and they have their they have their, their use in, in those moments. Mm. But but really when I stopped, I was like, oh my God, I need to like, I need to work out where I even yeah. live. Like, you know, I need to have my feet on the ground in London again. And yeah. you've got to rebuild your social life to degree. Like a PTSD kind of... Yeah, there, there is a bit of Come that. down. There is. I think there's, there's a lot of stuff about, you know, post-touring lifestyles um, that's well documented, not mm. just for artists, but for roadies and things like that. And I think there's an institutionalism in, in that sort of thing that comes. Like, even if your career's in decline, you're still going to stay in probably quite a nice hotel, mm. getting looked after. Yeah. Everyone's kind of taking care of off to an extent mm. and then you come out of that i mean i'm not really i, I like to think of kind of quite a grounded person so mm -hmm. i didn't really land with a bump i kind of i kind of landed where i wanted to and then this came laterally but it was more in covid times when i was like oh man wait a sec like the clubs are, are all shut like mm. 
uh, will, will the will anyone ever go back? I mean, even if I wanted to, I don't know if I want to, but yeah. I won't be able to maybe do that again. No. That was really did define my life. So you do, you have to kind of go back. I never really did that. You're always thinking forward. How do you progress? How do you, yeah. futurism does that. Like that kind of techno part of dance music that really started to take over what I was becoming about mm. at the end of last decade. Mm. Just pure futurism. Even if techno was there and didn't really sound that futuristic, quite a lot of techno I find quite, um, I absolutely love techno. Mm -hmm. But um, in terms of techno that we might get exposed to, um, it can be a little bit, it's actually too safe in a lot of ways. And a lot, of, you know, mm. let's just get a, a 909 out because that sounds great. Of course it sounds great, but how many million records are made yeah. like that? And, and the, you know, that that side of it, it is, uh, it is. Oh, so I'm going down a wormhole here, man. Go but on, it's like, here we go. But you know, it's sort of like We're following. I, I don't know. I've kind of lost my train of thought. But that that whole the whole thing of futurism, really, and, and music is is a massive part of the drive for mm. all this, you mm. know. And, and I just kind of, I think, when you had COVID, you kind of you needed to you needed to take stock. You and take you take stock of that, yeah. And you and you start to sort of like you start to think back of like, you know, how much of that was going on in real time in your life. Yeah. And then you're like, well, how does that, how's, where does that come from next? How does it go? And, and what does this all, <laughs> like, yeah. big existential questions, yeah. what does it all mean? And then, you know, of course, the last couple of years, it's sort of changed around again. And it's kind of, I look on, I look on the gram and it's like, a lot of my friends are out there, mm. particularly stateside as well. Like, mm. cause a lot of my friends there that are our age haven't mm. stopped, mm. you know, and you're like, man, it's it's back, you know, mm. it's it's back, it's there, you know. But I just, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's something in me, eventually through that whole process, got back round to the square one of like, I think, dare I say it, all that experience in my life does kind of define who I am. Yeah. And without it, uh, I'm, I'm a bit lost. I yeah. had two kids in uh, during COVID as well. <laughs> That's a whole other Yo, thing, um, you know. So. Yeah, so you've got the whole there's a there's a there's a deeper meaning to why you've got to make the decisions you do and you can't yes. be so flighty and yeah. make them. But um just going back to what you said there, social media is the blessing and curse of of our our kind of existence and when you see other people existing in their in their their best versions of themselves, yeah, you know, it's almost like you're looking into you know a, a, a magic ball of all the things that everyone's doing. It's true, and yeah, it can be quite um, deceiving in in a way. I find it like really like quite hardcore. Mm. Like I'm not quite a private person. Do you mm. know what I mean? Like it's so it doesn't appeal to you know put myself out there too much, mm. and also like I'm also like to the detriment perhaps of myself just quite archetypally sort of scottish like you know i don't <laughs> i'm probably more self-deprecating than self-celebrating a lot of the time which isn't great but you know it is partly who i am i don't like showboating i don't like trying to be like oh look at me you know mm -hmm. which seems to be like so much of the language of what you're supposed to do i know yeah. it's not the, the rules but it's it's a hard one to fit into, yet you yeah. kind of have to, in some, in some form, you've got to find some way of having a presence. Yeah, yeah. that's an in, that's an interesting way of explaining yeah. it. Because if, like, when you've got a skill and a talent that overwrite, you know, it's time-consuming being a producer. Yeah, man. Like, how on earth, I mean, never mind showboating, how are you ever going to find the time to even create a narrative on a, on a social platform when you've, you're fo fully focused on creating the best content that would see you through the next 10 years? Of, you know? This is it, do you know what I mean? It, and then, all, you know, also the, all the other stuff that comes with it, like, you know, if you're doing it yourself, like, you mm. know, it, like, on, like having your own label and all these things that sound great, even if you're just putting out your music and no one else's, it's like you've got so many bits and bobs to to oversee to do that. You know, even if you've got a team, it's you're still. You're, I suppose you're still kind of CEO of all that. You've got to yeah. be like, right, what's going on here? And it it takes up so much time. And then yeah, having two children and being hands on with that, mm. which is again like absolute blessing. Like to be in that position, it it then just again you have to start understanding your own workload your work rate mm. and how that adapts i was always one of those people that very much could 
lose myself in tweaking, you know, like I was mm. a sort of, I think that's one of the things that came from that lineage of, you know, the, the scratch perverts days. Once I found something that I could connect with that was in terms of producing music mm. was actually prolific enough to sort of start a project that went somewhere like Jack Beats did with Benny. You know, we had our different roles there for sure. Mm. And, and the interplay between those roles is critical to how that project went and mm. why it was really ses- successful when it was. But I think, you know, my my part really was we'd, we'd really meet in my studio and we'd get the vibes together. I tended to do most of the sound design. And then I really liked, I just really liked mixing the records. And I wasn't doing it because, like... Benny was like, go go mix the record. I just he would sort of go home, and I just I'd sit in the evening and mm-hmm. tweak it, and I I get really excited when it sounded a bit better. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And that's a process which I I really indulged in in a way. Um, but that was really my my strength in the project. And then when you're on your own with that, and you've got two kids, I'm like, I can't just accidentally grab six hours tonight. Mm. I can't accidentally grab six hours in the day. So well, how <laughs> on earth am I gonna do this, <laughs> yeah. man? And it's like. That took about five years of working out new workflows and and how to commit and how not to commit to things. Yeah. Um, and again, I'm I'm still figuring that out. I'm starting to work with other people again, first time in a long time. I'm really precious about these things, and mm. it's like you're like, right, how is that going to work? Like, because yeah. I can't be the I can't put myself in those positions where like, oh, leave it with me. I'll I'll, I'll do a mix on this. Like, mm. I'll maybe have to be like, right, I'll, I'll let's collaborate on some synths. Like. And yeah. let go. I gotta let go. And That's do... crazy because yeah. you're, yeah, you're, you're very much a non-delegative. Oh, I'm just gonna do this. Well, yeah. You're spontaneous and you do it, and it's almost like the thankless task. But you, you don't want that sort of. You, you just want the. You, you love the process. Don't yeah, you? definitely. And there's a, there's a control element of this as well, where you're yeah. like, not to say you're a control freak, but I suppose in a way, maybe it's what's labelled as part of that thing of being like, oh well, I, I did the mixing on X amount of Japanese tunes. So it's probably because I took control of that and did it. Mm-hmm. says a lot about me too you know mm. more maybe more than anyone else mm-hmm. so there's, there's learning to let go of those things learning to get things moving in the right ways so you're you're mm. delegating and and getting solutions so you can sustain your career but sustain your quality and hopefully increase yeah. you know like you you don't want to get worse you want to get better that's so. the theory yeah <laughs> we'll see <laughs> but um well and you know it, the right junction there to talk about the delegation and the work you've been doing within the the tech space with yeah. nfts because a lot of your projects have been almost like a co uh creative um d- yeah like a dual lane of the tech big up jeff metal the design <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, the yeah creativity with it uh, that, that almost like surrounds the th- so the music's almost like a soundtrack to yeah. this this new space that you're entering i mean we're talking tech stuff here people you know it got, it got it went down a massive wormhole in sort of covid times with this yeah, yeah. I mean, the general backstory starts with at the la- last podcast where it was, I was, you know, I, I'd reached about a 20 year juncture in my career and I was like, I really think I need to find a space to do a solo project mm. and find what that sound is. At the time, I was like quite, as I was saying earlier, very interested in techno and, and, and the sort of ethos, I suppose, behind it. So yeah, I had to experiment for a couple of years. Felt. I don't know if I was right about this remotely, but I felt I was kind of getting close to an album and um, COVID came. And also at the same time, my my wife became pregnant with our, our daughter and it started to shift things like really, really massively. For, you know, everyone's got a, a massive story around COVID. Mm, it changed mm. everyone's life, right? Um but our story was like, you know, what was ours. And it just, it started to make me reevaluate. Most of what I'd been working on was about understanding how to get a sort of nuanced sound that I was kind of had in my head, what I was looking for. It's somewhere between a sort of kind of Radiohead, James Holden kind of sound and a sort of trying to, trying to crack the code on something that was a bit, could sit in a lane with a sort of John Hopkins sound. Mm-hmm. I wanted that fluidity that, say John Hopkins's records sound like they're being produced in almost critically perfect lab conditions to get <laughs> certain sounds to me anyway to my ears and I love that but then I got really really interested in using modular stuff to 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 work on and then I got really interested in how floating points could do that and sound like he was almost playing live so I was wow. so I wanted that because it harks back to the turntablism mm. thing where it's like well 
don't know if I've got the patience to really go down that route of trying to get these absolutely crafted studio records perfect. I actually want I want to feel like it sounds a bit live. Mm -hmm. So that went on and on and on. <laughs> and like <laughs> and then I was like, I think actually these like pieces of music that didn't even really have drums are are probably a bit better than if I just kind of effectively stick a donk on it and mm -hmm. and start going that route, maybe I need to reevaluate this. And frankly, uh, there's no club that if I get this right, there's gonna it's gonna be a use for. So let's not spoil this. Let's be brave. Mm. Um, and then yeah, that that went on. My my daughter was born. She got very very ill. Um, two uh, ten days after, ten weeks after, and landed up in intensive care for a week. Wow. They thought she had SIDS. Um, uh, they couldn't diagnose any more than that. They said, you go off and live your life. Um, she, you know, so it's a long story, but she, she came very close to the edge. Wow. And that's like the biggest life affirming moment like I've, I could ever have had. Really. Mm -hmm. And then two, two months later, we went on our first family holiday. It happened again. We were in a cottage in the middle of nowhere. What? And there was no phone reception. Nothing. It's like the craziest thing. And my wife ran out of the cottage, bless her, beside this beauty point in uh, Dorset, people go and um, watch the sun go down. Mm. Sun had gone down, people coming back down this little hill. And uh, my wife's screaming, this family coming, it's still COVID time, so like we're, we were in between lockdowns, so we'd gone on this little break, but everyone still had masks. Yeah, yeah. But so it's weird enough that people are coming in the house with no masks. One of them's uh, a nurse. Was she cl clocked a nurse for up in the hill? I don't know how it's like, literally the angels fell that night and came and landed on us, man. And it's like her husband was there and her daughter, her daughter's phone was working, so her daughter managed to get the ambulance. Wow. The ambulance gets there, brings her around, couldn't bring her around the first time, and then came back and she got better. They couldn't ever diagnose it though. Couldn't diagnose it. It's it a lot of, uh, it's a massive medical tangent, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of like things that go on with very young children which are, medical science hasn't caught with a lot of developmental yeah. stuff which you no one really talks about because frankly it's terrifying yeah you know you don't want to know these things brush it under the carpet as soon yeah, as it's yeah happened. literally literally yeah. and it's like that that kind of just really defined our existence after that so you know she she got better and she's better she's good mm. she's strong as an ox apparently these things define often how the kids become quite meek mm. which you'd understand if you go into something or they become like absolute raging bulls mm. my daughter is a raging bull when she's 13 <laughs> she's going to terrorise me <laughs> but I'd rather that way so it's a happy ending in that respect but but the bit in between going back to the music that when COVID was kind of kind of done and we were all adjusting back and some people were still sheltering the sort of at risk kind yeah. of factors she was very much in the at risk category mm. she was an outpatient for 18 months so we were sort of kind of like uh, you know very much at the mercy of that mm. and again we just lived in our little bubble at home until fairly recently which is a very odd thing to have done mm. um but again incubated this strange lifestyle where you're sort of my studio's at home mm. so i was able to keep working and yeah this strange record got stranger and stranger mm. and oddly enough within that um a friend of mine uh, who is uh, a big crypto investor. I have I don't own any crypto. I still don't. <laughs> right, right. So just to put this in perspective of what this... I might just add, I don't own any gold miles on any aeroplane cards <laughs> neither. So, so. Neither do I. I'm now officially back on blue because I don't travel anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I never was. I, didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I lucked out there. Uh. But yeah, and then, you know, there was... Um, that was a couple of years back when the, the NFT thing for art was going crazy. I really, I'm really interested in art. I collect art. Mm. Um, and he was, I, I was almost embarrassingly massively like, what oh, nah, this is a load of rubbish. You know, <laughs> really? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like massively, I still probably think a lot of it is, but you know, given what come, came next, to do something like a bit of a hypocrite, but he did show me some stuff like to do what was going on with music. Again, mm. most of it I thought was absolute rubbish. But I saw one guy called Deaf Beef who was doing these, um, literally like like kind of microscopic computer programs if you like they were containing in nfts that would generate um music and and visuals at the point where somebody minted the nft you buy the mm -hmm. nft and it generates this thing mm -hmm. and i was like I, I don't know why but this is really interesting it's like sort of some apex level mm. weirdness uh, and it 
I don't know why I, I just found it fascinating and I was like that's cool man that's like some next level madness what is mm. all this and there was a market for that stuff too and I was like well you know like there's no market in music because the clubs were still shut I was like I really do need to figure out I've got two children to figure yeah. out something to do here and I've got to do it fast so he was like look I can he's a big investor um, across it's basically like new tech yeah. really it's what it is he's like I can introduce you to some people and, and did and eventually I landed up getting um, involved with some guys um, in a group called Beats Die and they um, after three four months of incubating an idea and doing big presentation to the sort of board of investors they backed developing the album project I had which is effectively quite a well, it's effectively like really the version that's out now. Mm. Um, quite an ambient record, really. Mm. Um, but they put a lot of money behind it to turn it into a sort of audio-visual project that they could have. They just wanted ownership of an NFT mm. version of it. And I, and I was like, well, let's try and build one. Why not? Like, you know, Hugely forward-thinking and innovative. Like, yeah. I mean, NFTs have such a bad rep, right? And I, again, I don't own any, but... Like at the time, it was interesting. It was all bored apes and things like that. people selling, like, mm. you know, like as my dad would say, selling a monkey JPEG for yeah, like a yeah. million dollars. What's that all about? And I, I don't know. I've got no answer to that. But coming from a point of view where you're, you're knowing that, you know, musicians are being financially so suppressed by the models that exist. Yeah. You know, the Spotify model needs no explanation. It works for this micro percentage. Yeah. Of, and then it works very unfairly for most others and, yeah. and there's not going to be much change in that for a while so if there's legitimately an arm here to do really good projects and then there's a, a collector base here that maybe is a bit more like an art collector base yeah that maybe buys 10 copies of an album for x amount but can sustain an artist's career or they mm. or they or there's maybe a, a mass production version of this um then we need to explore it. It's important because maybe I can find something here to sustain myself and I can share that and sustain, help sustain yeah. friends. So like, And the guys that backed me financially were all for this and that's what I really liked because they were prepared to put, you know, I, I didn't make a lot of money at the project by any stretch, but they were prepared to put a lot in to try and build something. I guess they would have figured out maybe how to develop a platform. Yeah. They could have made a lot of money. That's where their interests were, but it wasn't like working with a record label. No. It wasn't like working with some kind of crass, I don't know, something that just felt like dated or wrong. It felt mm. like some a, an opportunity to try something new. Yeah, so I, yeah. I went for that with them and we spent a year and developed what became, through a few twists and turns in their world, really a, a proof of concept of what you could do with the tech. That's crazy. And I guess that's what f funded it because with NFTs, it's almost like you need a project to, you know, hang ideas off of yeah. and really go the distance. Money yeah. isn't really in question. It's more about how, what would it look like if you did do that? Yeah. And how would that affect state of play within an NFT world? Yeah, this is it, man. It's really strange. It's like, you know, Jeff and I, Jeff Metal, who I, I work on all my stuff with Jeff does the visual side of mm. it. We were in all these conversations together. At the same time, we were looking at a visual language for the, for the project and the album as well and and he's you know he's a really interesting guy we've known for years and years mm. but he's really he's he was like the uk hip-hop photographer to the to the yeah, stars yeah, yeah. back right. in the day and, right. and all these other things and then landed that he now works really highly in and adidas does like all types of amazing things so to have him on board at this point was quite you know quite an ass because he's a busy man yeah yeah you know status but, up yeah exactly right? yeah. but he you know he he approached it like a, a real a real big project and and he really showed me like what we need to you know, like psychoanalyzed what i was doing with my music and explained it to me back and i was like all oh, right that's what i'm doing <laughs> he's like, this is what we need to do with a, you know we need to represent your record with this stuff yeah, yeah. brought into a branding language i'm like right okay cool wow, so we kind of did and, and you start to realize that what you're doing is is all truly just about culture mm. and celebrating that culture and you know referencing all points of the culture to push new you know new boundaries so all these sort of interesting things i loved working with them on it. i still do mm. but then the guys oddly enough they were working with they put the money behind developing the project they like really celebrated all the thinking i'm like god almighty this is like a parallel universe like, how are we in covid <laughs> time still and like someone's actually been like yo let's put money behind culture <laughs> yeah, yeah i was yeah, like yeah. i'm with you guys that doesn't know that's not happening anywhere yeah, else at the time right? it was it was a really mad thing you know and i met a lot of other people through that journey that you know 
um, th there's a, there's a, there's a whole other world there that exists that is is there to find out about if you're interested, but mm. if you don't go looking for it, you're not going to find it. You just won't find it. Yeah, that's an interesting there's, way yeah, looking at it. There, there's groups, there's DAOs out there which have... I won't go into names, but there's, there's, a, there's a group called Noise DAO, um, which is a, a, a subgroup of uh, one of the biggest or the biggest art DAO. DAOs are decentralised organisations. They're like groups mm. that exist. Yeah. Um, and the biggest art one that I know about is called Flamingo. They started... Um, they're kind of like... The, the groups of individuals that are really interested in that stuff that invest into these groups they buy art and things mm -hmm, like that mm -hmm. and they set up one for music and um, Noise ended up supporting the project as well but the people involved in Noise are like you know like sort of CEO level kind of um, or former CEOs of like major labels down to like some of the most prolific people in music Whoa. you know there's people in there doing stuff and I was like man like this is a whole new yeah, World. on so many levels. And I do think, you know, we we built a, a version of an idea of where, where you could go with that technology, which I think is now probably mm. a year or two on is totally outdated, you know, but it was an idea that you could create a 3D album, like mm. a, a VR experience that could be sold, mm. you know. And, and also the idea too was that that VR experience was the live show to the record, yeah. that then if we did, do you occasionally in the real world you could have an archived version mm -hmm. with unique traits and stuff or an exhibition space yeah with the real art exactly design. you know and that was a great a great thing to experiment with and we built it and and it worked and you know is that something that's ever going to be a model for mass marketing music 100 percent not do you, you don't think I mean? so well i don't know but the thing that did live with me which is really fascinating is that technology that these guys are day in day out day in. you know i came in as a sort of tourist you know mm. i came in and ha i came and worked with them as a creative mm -hmm. you know and i loved it and i did for a while think of trying to you know you get the bug you're like i want to find ways of i kind of just wanted to find ways of making it work to help people mm -hmm. that's the truth mm -hmm. really um and the more and more i realized that that was about building platforms and stuff the more i realized that actually i'm not i'm not a, i'm not a tech guy that sits by a desk i tech guy that plays yeah instruments are it's stuff a lot like that. isn't it when you don't know and it's, it's different like you you've wormholes you you're down yeah. in the in the trenches there. yeah and I, I met some people that i would probably describe as kind of like geniuses that i'm like yeah I, i'm yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I, I tapped out about five I, minutes ago when you started yeah you don't want me level. anywhere near this so yeah <laughs> okay like i i i i did this project as a, as a sort of one-off i don't advertise the nft part hugely unless it's conversations like this because it's misunderstood mm. so it's more i've tried to contain it in the world that it was built for yeah so it, it stays there as a as a milestone for them it seems to be very respecting that role which i'm delighted about and then the real world side to not confuse things i just sort of pushed the visuals out mm. work with an amazing um young guy called logan gomez who um he and i built the, the the visuals that are in in the vr experience together he, wow. he's a 3d modeler and incredibly talented so you know reference him give him his flowers yeah hold keep him moving you know and, and then we you know like everything it doesn't matter how big a story is behind this two weeks man everyone's like yeah that was cool what are you yeah, did yeah. next i'm like dude that's like that just took me three years to break, <laughs> yeah you know. there was 15 people in that team yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> well it's because it is yeah. a sizable amount of people that are working on these and, and yeah. what seems <laughs> Dare I say it? Easy on the eye, therefore simple in in your impression of it. Yeah. But the truth is, is there's about fifteen people that you're batting and managing back and forth Man. from America to to Eastern Europe. Yeah, right? like the, the the team of guys that did the coding, like man, like they're a group of guys called Intrino. I've got so much love for, and like they were like. You know, they were amazing because I'd be like, okay, guys, so I just want to like this wall here in the room, I just want to make it invisible so you can just see through it and you can see the background. They're like, blah, 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 blah. I think you've got to take the alpha there. You can't do the alpha there. It's going to be 800,000 gigabytes if you do that. I'm like, why? <laughs> and they're like, because blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, no. And then two weeks later, I'd be like, we've cracked it. Yeah. You know, you get on these Zoom calls. It. And I'm like, man, like, you kind of get their excitement because you're like, you made that wall invisible. You figured out how to code it down to like not like four K, yeah. And you're like, you're excited. I'm like, I, I get, I get that. Mm. But like at the end of it, I was like, man, I, I think I'm just torturing people because you're inexperienced on those things. Okay, maybe that, maybe that's how things evolve. But 
I was like, man, this is like so many square pegs and round holes. You I know? feel you though, because what, and it's emotional as well. Because when people say they can't do something, that's and then they exceed expectation, under promise, yeah. over deliver, yeah, and then out of said, we've done it. It's like, man, <laughs> you know. A little bit of me is like, why didn't you say you could do it in the first place? You just got to try it out. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's this constant tech world. It's a tech mindset that people have, it is, man. and it's still it's still baffling that even with the, even with cameramen and people yeah. live streamers and yeah, things like that, the things they say they can't do that will they then just apply about two weeks to it and all of a sudden have done it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's bonkers. It is, man, and the world moves so quick as well with these things that mm. it's like you know. A few weeks in a in a few forums and wormholes that X Y and Z you can <laughs> with the right people you can come up with a lot of things but yeah it was it, man it, I I feel very blessed to have done it at times I feel like it sort of was like I don't know maybe it's a bit of PTSD about it too because I never would have done that if it hadn't been for COVID or probably even my daughter getting sick I I really felt like a maybe it was a need for purpose again you yeah. know there's a there's a need for purpose when you're a human and I felt a lot of that when I became a dad you know. Mm. And, and when your purpose does feel, even if you're slightly maybe taking some sort of leave of absence from it, like maybe I was not doing clubs for a long time, but then when that's taken away, you're like, well, man, what, what really is my purpose? Because mm. I, I don't, I've done loads of work with pop people, but it's really for remixing. We're all mm. like Jackbees, we had a massive, massive part of our career especially for like three or four years near the early part was remixing yeah, yeah and it was not really about trying to produce those artists it was like who's next and you yeah, keep yeah. going up till you get to like beyonce or whatever and yeah. that was like you know these things are massive milestones for you but you're like yeah but it's just they're wanting to come to you at that point to get their music in more clubs mm -hmm. they're not coming to you to get them on the radio it's a whole different different it thing whole different and, and i don't do very well sitting in rooms with you know we did try it a little bit we had a deal with columbia me and benny but like you know, okay, we've got this new girl group. Let's go and like make you guys make a tune. You sort of sit there and you're like, oh yeah, I, I'm, I'm not that guy. I've been friends with a few people that are like, you know, my friend Mark Ralph is like the perfect pop producer. It's like, yeah. stick Daniel Avery in with him, they'll make an amazing techno record. Mm -hmm. Stick Shania Twain with him, they're at number one. Yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. a pop producer. Yeah, you know, like that's how it works. Yeah. You know. Not like someone that you come around mine that's like, okay, like we've got some like really strange like valve yeah. oscillator made by some guy in a garage in Portland <laughs> who's really moody if you ask him anything. You know, it's like really that actually exists here. Oh yeah, totally, man. Yeah, like and you have to like grovel to get them to fix things and stuff. But then when you use it, it sounds like well, nothing else. You know, like it's... let's just stick with that for a second. Hold on, so, <laughs> hold on. So uh, there's a culture here. There's a there's a scene where people make individual components for for external use on your laptop, modulars, e equalizers, and preamp stuff. It, it goes right. Okay, th this is this is where it really ties into the beginning, right? Okay. So again, <laughs> slight COVID wormhole, slight like solo project wormhole. You can do what you want for a bit. Was like taking the module thing a bit more seriously and i'd actually rebelled against it for so many years but was fascinated because i was like man it's too much of a wormhole for me and it is expensive and i didn't really understand the expense um but yeah effectively the, the nuts and bolts of it is there's this absolute wildly um devoted following for this stuff and there's quite a few people that come in and out of it through like music that's a bit more, bit more commercial, shall we say? I, when I say commercial, I'm saying like people that you might see on Instagram level commercial that are like down the wormhole with this. But there's, there's loads of other people. I swear, they just buy it, make really interesting little bits of music and stick them up on forums and play it to each other. Really? And I don't think it goes any further than that. Sometimes it's amazing, man. Like yeah. you're like, wow, that sounds beautiful. <laughs> like there's yeah. like, yeah, I used to use like the blah 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 through this and that, and you're like. I got the bug massively, but also what I really liked about it was it was this community that was like just absolutely egoless as far as I could tell. Everyone's mm. helping one another mm. and really, really like intriguingly at the time where I got in, there was quite a lot of like kind of vlogging, I suppose, mm. about it. There's this guy called Div Kid and a guy called Mylar Melodies who were... Um, I think that I think the popularity in this stuff was really spiking at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. There was a point where it was kind of crossing. I think it's died down a lot now, but there was a point, and they were, I think, really kind of getting sponsored off the guys that making the modules to do videos. I don't think they were probably maybe made, made a few quid, but I think mm. it was genuinely like, we'll give you a module if you'll make a video. So these guys are making like 
20 minute, 30 minute, incredibly in-depth videos about one module. Wow. And coming out with like signs that you're like, man, Jesus really? Christ. Like, this is too good. Like, this is gold. And my mentality, especially with Jack Beats, which I think will make sense, was it was always, again, based on hip hop, was about trying to find individualism, trying to find those bits that other people haven't got yet. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, I, I see where this is going in, in this like microcosm, but if I just bring a bit of this over here, mm. maybe I can use that in a tuner. I hear a sound, I'm like, if I use that this way in like a techno track or something a bit more straight, wow. I've got a track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it started to justify the expense of building this up. I mean, like, <laughs> there's yeah. a track in that, there's a track in that. Yeah, yeah. No, but baby, I just need to get you, I just, there's a track in this one. Yeah. I need this, I need this box. Danger. <laughs> pure danger, pure, pure gear accumulation syndrome, pure gas. <laughs> but yeah, it took a long time. The thing that was really, useful about it was you could kind of buy and sell most of this stuff mm. either what you paid for it or sometimes at a bit of a premium because yeah. it's, it's generally in quite short supply yeah so it was able to kind of try things it didn't work yeah move them on and eventually landed up it does get quite geeky but i landed up with a sort of system just by a few manufacturers yeah one of whom is now that stuff that looks like sort of russian kind of spy equipment yeah 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 that's that guy is he's like the sort of I don't know, like the one of the sort of the gods of really? this stuff. Yeah, it's really? like super pure. That's very expensive, but he's dead now, so it's like you can't get it. Really? Is that like, Inca's daughter? All right, look, look, I'm going to cut to the chair. How much would one of them cost now on the, on the market? Man, it really depends which bit you get. Do you know yeah, what I mean? or that big bit there. <laughs> Let's the go big, with the bit. I mean, the, the, one with, yeah. the big chunk of stuff that's there in that box, yeah. it's probably the best part of like. Close to ten grand for that Stop box. Stop it off. What for within the box? Not the whole thing. Just one just of the... the the whole that whole box. Yeah, yeah I was going to say didn't, they didn't start at that price, but because they're they're really rare. Yeah, people try and charge twice what they're worth. So it's not you've got to be really careful with really? this stuff. You don't want to buy things in, in that inflate. But it's a bit like records. Yeah, it's like that. And then this this stuff here with the valves is like yeah, the valves are being yeah. fucking. That this. stuff you used to be able to get really quite easily, and, and then like people kind of caught onto it. And for some reason now, the people are asking loads of money. But Trent Reznor yeah. and people like that yeah. used a lot of the Metasonic stuff. Gotcha. Um, and I think that stuff just adds lineage. But oddly enough, when COVID happened, all these things started to accumulate in value for some weird reason. Yeah, people are in it. I know. You know. It's, it's uh, so when you're when you're calling up a. a, a, a <laughs> you, need to, you need to contact somebody for a bit of a blag because this part that you're after is pretty hard to get a hold of. Do you do you go down that 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 road of well you know I happen to have a, a da, 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 da. so uh, I am the legit and uh, yeah I just need this component <laughs> for it um, so yeah can you do me a good deal <laughs> do you ever that sometimes that or sometimes it's like <laughs> someone's got one on like reverb or eBay and you're like listen man it's quite expensive but I've got this uh, blah 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 yeah yeah do you want to trade it's like really yeah man it goes that way I've, I've done that amazing it goes that way with a lot of studio stuff I think it's it's a funny world it's very like record collecting it's like I absolutely yeah. love you, love it. it I just, love it, man. But the thing is, for me, right, the, the, the bit that I got to with it was like, the bits that are here are what I use to make records. And, and you're I, using I them. I clear everything out that mm -hmm. I don't. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually doing a bit of a purge now because it's, it's, it's a gift and a curse in some respects for making music that's on a time scale because it can be incredibly fast mm. for certain things I'm used to doing. And other things, if you're going down wormholes, you can lose days, days and weeks. Yeah. And that's not, from a career perspective, that's not, the greatest that's, so it's amazing yeah <laughs> you I gotta mean, be careful man just incredible i'm definitely gonna take a camera around to, and put it in it, as we're it, talking it took me about three years to work that system the way it is now to be like it's integrated with the computer i can make music fast what's the most rarest thing you've got here um, i guess that's the, the the guy with the guy the, the piece uh, with the guy that's passed perhaps i don't know yeah maybe just the sort of the, that stuff up there probably yeah there's a guy there's a couple of like mod cam ones that guy was he's got I don't think he'll ever make really? stuff again. I really? Don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's a weird one. I don't really know what I'm so talking about. Deep. The guy that makes the Macbeth stuff, he actually um, <laughs> he used to drink with Brian DJ Extra's dad. Yeah? Right the corner. Big up Brian, and, by yeah, the way. He lives around the corner, apparently, from my mum. No Which way. is well weird, because he's one of the, also one of the most revered people that ever made this stuff, probably because he only made a few things. Oh, so you've already got a hook. That was, a, yeah. that was a... But apparently, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of stories about him as well, but I don't really know, man. I just, I just a music guy. I don't, yeah. I don't really... I don't really know enough about the other side of it, but I just love it. I love you, love it, and it's uh, yeah. it's all flashing away. Well, I made I, I made the whole of the album on it. That's yeah, where, that's where it sort of became, and, and now it's about transferring that to something a bit, bit more. 
suppose if, if you the way my brain goes with it is it can go really out there or if you contain it slightly you start to get probably what i was really after in the first place of a solo project is that kind of like kind of, without sounding exactly like them you get a sort of chemical brothers sort of feel mm. where you are making quite like traditional dance music but it has that off the wall mm. off kilter thing going on not to like a level say like floating points go where he sort of has that but it's just like it's got that jazz element it's just yeah. him you know it's yeah. got that i'm i'm not from that background enough to get that right mm -hmm. but i'm from that background enough to get the the slightly more bookended dance floor bit mm. a bit more on point i think so that's where this stuff is just gold this yeah, it's coming to its yeah, own kind and of what i would try and do in the computer with this probably wouldn't sound as good or it would take me so much longer mm. to find the nuance where that stuff just does it by default yeah it's, it's like having things, a good, good vocalist yeah yeah that's right and the syncopation the pulsing the the, the jacking of certain things yeah that it's all of that that comes inherent in that technology yeah that you can't readily just do yeah with samples it, or whatever. it's nuance and tone yeah like all the manufacturers stuff sounds fairly different so you do have to work out what tones you're after you know one side of this for instance is like quite noisy and mm -hmm. grungy almost band level mm. that side's really clean and probably a bit more suitable for wow. you know so it's kind of it's got as low man ah, i can so see boring. how you, oh no so i boring. can see how you'd fall like, <laughs> into two weeks from now it's like yeah where, where, where's neil you know he's still in here yeah. just mad scientist it's just the it, old yeah. mad scientist thing man yeah. but yeah but it's it's been it's been fun i think now though like the next few years for me is like discipline of like no changes just more like just making music with it and so experimenting with, on that side which feels really nice and again like i was saying just back to back to that kind of familiar place of making records that feel a bit like you just sort of know what you're doing with consistency and without yeah. too much chop and change of yeah tech. exactly mm. exactly see there's the future you see yeah so um, yeah. you ever gonna go back out dj oh you know what one. man like it's it's interesting i kind of like I, I, it's, it's weird i think probably yeah I, I think i'd really like to i've got to figure out how that will come around i mean this year like the second phase of this project is going to be around releasing quite a lot of, you know, dance music, mm. really, mainly in some form or another, um, or something more with a foot in the club. Because I could definitely hear it in Fabric. There's a, there's a room for that too. Yeah, for well, like sure. the, new, the, the new single, which will be out around about the time, yeah. probably bog up whenever, um, that's definitely much more on that zone, yeah. sort of kind of Gasofelstein-y, sort of mm. Chemical brothers -y vibes to an extent. It's yeah. got a bit of that in spades because it was kind of the theme behind that record maybe some of the other stuff sounded a little bit more modern i don't know but mm. like yeah i think i think it could come together again man like you know like it's it, you you grow older like you know for instance fabric would be in the obvious place mm. you know and sean was always sean's yeah rest in know, peace sean. yeah he's like he's you know sean's a big part of, was a big part of my life he's still as god rest his soul he's um, Lyra's godfather mm -hmm. wow you know and it's like you know it, it's funny like little bits like him him not being here on a personal level is a massive thing but then you you, you gotta be honest with yourself when you think back to those things mm -hmm. oh, I'll go back to clubs and I'll break stuff. I'm like Sean didn't even work there anymore but he'd still act like he did mm -hmm. you know if I was gonna think about going back there I'd have called him I'd be like what do you think and then he's not here you know mm -hmm. you get older like and, and people you, you lose folk as well in amongst all this yeah. you know and, and that's that's another part that i'm like sort of getting coming to terms of like i where would you where do you start yeah, you know yeah, yeah, so yeah. it will find its way but then you know same goes for music man like i i didn't really know where things would go with that with the type of music i was making and and it's starting to find you know the the phone's starting to ring off the back of that now so you know there's there's interest in irons in the fire that came in the last few weeks i just didn't expect you know just going back staying in the same in the right lane yeah so it's like you naturally fall back in and things gravitate towards you yeah exactly mm. you know so again like we were saying man it's it's about sort of for me just trying to listen a tiny bit to the universe not be too controlling mm. but also like when the opportunities are there like make sure you're taking them mm. and seeing where you can you can take that that on to yeah. you know what i mean because that's quite um i think that's the the part that you have all that sort of survival part as a as an artist mm. is really alive when you're on the, the road all the time mm. jumping a to b when you slow down a bit i think that does 
take a little bit of practice to get back into. Yeah, so I'm trying yeah. to hone that again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, life being the way it is and... I get it. Yeah, I get it. But yeah. it's all ready to go. You're you're ready. You're you're a well-oiled machine anyway. Yeah, so yeah, we'll see, man. See what the kids make of you coming home at two in the morning or something. You know, <laughs> I don't know, man. It's really weird. I like um, I landed up. You know, I set up and it's really weird. Like I feel such an old man. I set up an Instagram account for the this project, and then after like a few months of building it up, it's doing quite well. Like they pretty much, I don't know what they call it. They but kind of like, I'm still there, but no one can sort of see it. Mm. And I think it was because I was only posting like um, animated stuff, and like I don't really know what went on, but they sort yeah. of restricted because I started another one. I'm like, oh, it's just this point. Like, literally, mm. like, what's the point in all this? Man? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm too over the hill. Still, just trying to like make like nice little reels, get them up there. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, like the other day, I can't go into this too much, but the other day, like someone, I've got a few people who reached out, you know, complimenting yeah. the music, which is really lovely. Yeah, you know, we we do a remix for me, blah blah, and it's like not. I haven't quite got the time to, really, to do yeah. much else at the moment, but there weren't things that I was going to be able to do. And then somebody reached out. It was like, saying that sort of stuff, I'm producing for X and Y, who were, I was like, no, you're definitely not. Really? <laughs> and then they were, and I was like, I'll send you some of the synth stuff I'm doing. And suddenly it's like, you know, you're like, all right, so maybe those funny melodies that I'm doing can be shared with people to then become songs for other people and that type of stuff and that's that's another exciting wow lane that's sort of opening up in real time right now that's we'll brilliant. see but that would be really great because i, I most of the, my headspace for writing music is like hip-hop melodies and mm. things like that or extensions off mm. um but i don't really i don't really turn them into that type of music no. but they can be for someone else flipped. yeah so and then it becomes a co-writing thing and boom, yeah boom. exactly it's just like i don't mind the idea of maybe being like of a part of my my job or my existence being like doing like synth parts for people because i love doing that you and know? There's, there's you know you've got all the facilities yeah. to make real original pieces yeah that I'd, people want well we'll see i don't know i didn't think they did but apparently some people might be interested so there's things like that too you know just the, the permanent hustle, I suppose, mm. if we're really honest. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is, yeah. We'll see, man. There's a few things going on. Well, brother, your permanent hustle has led you to this point. <laughs> and, jeez, I mean, a legacy to die for. The technological advancements in a studio that only, uh, you know, a staunch gearhead uh, would appreciate. It's just crazy. And, and also skill sets that allow you to broaden um, your creative palette. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I hope so, man. You know, it's like you just try and keep all the good bits in line, you know, and, mm. and try just, yeah, just keep moving. That's the key, isn't it? Yeah. You just got to try and keep moving. And, you know, I think, I do think it gets a little harder as you get older, but I don't think it has to be hard. I just think you have to do a little bit, of, as my wife would say, you do the work, you know? Yeah. But soul searching and, yeah. yeah, just remind yourself that. I guess it's a job just like any other thing and yeah. the responsibilities just load up on you and you've just got to kind of figure it out. That's Man, that's a really good analogy because that's the bit that disconnects when you go off on the explorations. Mm. The job bit does disconnect. Like, and that's yeah. that's the bit that you, you need to keep that in line. And yeah, I'm, for I'm sure. concentrating hard on that this year. So invisibly it looks like I'm just doing what I love doing, but actually I'm also sort of creating a lane where it can sustain things for another that's what you years, want though you know that's mean? what it's all about because you know that's it's a it's a proven track record for you oh thank you, know? you brother my brother neil daly in the building plus one jack beats i mean what do you want <laughs> legacy here uh killer killer podcast outline was out of fashion uh report from studio hq um and uh an undisclosed location um listen sharing is caring we've got 500 plus podcasts you know tell a friend to tell a friend crime don't pay but neither did they <laughs> don't talk to an i wouldn't people we stay lucky easy yeah. yes bro that was Ooh. awesome man <laughs> yeah baby